but what if the other four three four. didn't come? No, what if the other three didn't come and then you've got a developer out there that's developing 60 lots and all of a sudden he's got to pay the brunt of that upgrade. That's all I'm saying is, is that I, I think that to me that, that is a concern. Shouldn't I put on the tap on these, whatever it's probably shouldn't those cover cover this upgrade our system? The tap fees. Passive fees. They they help with, with piping it all. I mean, the, in our section here we'll see the individual cost of the different components and they're they're high, they're not going to cover it They should have. They will help. So I mean, that's what so somebody comes in and deals with 450 million their fees they pay shouldn't help put in piping and equipment infrastructure. Somebody comes and pays 60, then there there's good help. So I mean it should all even though it should be one, I agree with the chair, it should be one developer truck. Look, for us to upgrade the system, all the fees we've collected should go into that upgrade. Am I wrong? It's upgrading your system, in my opinion. It is upgrading your system as a whole as growth requires it. You could get into a situation, for example, if you've got a four-inch water main and then all of a sudden you've had growth in this area, you've got to upgrade your water main to a six-inch main. Just for the supply standpoint, which is key that we supply, you know, for our hydrants and everything else, the proper product we need. So, do you pass that cost on to just one developer because he's the one that fell in the slot, or is that something that the county needs to take a look at? That's their responsibility from the utility standpoint. That your system is growing. Okay, we've got to make these upgrades to that system. Well, yeah. What's the Probably to upgrade that system is probably in the neighborhood of on that particular with all these that we're talking about. Probably in the neighborhood of uh, sixty to eighty thousand. I uh, had a conversation uh, with developer, one of the developers for uh, Nelson Hill, and his statement on this was, "Tell Steve I'm not paying." Bill to upgrade that system, I gave him 240 customers there about. And uh, so if y'all want to talk about this in me, let me know. So well, that should be, really, in all honesty, that, that should be the opinion of the developers. And I mean, I, I, I don't have any problem with that, but what it brings up is this issue of currently our policy is is that if a developer creates the need for an upgrade, then that cost falls on him, and that's unfair. I don't think that, that we, we, we need to take a look at that and we need to change that image. Just like that, my hands are bound by that. I understand, I'm with you, I, I got that. That's where I'm trying to untie it. What's your thoughts? Oh, I can do it. It makes sense. You know, it's on the right. Uh, the right thing to do. Uh, it makes sense. Mark? I'm kind of thinking like he was originally thinking that the tap on fees should cover this stuff. I mean, it should cover it. Okay, okay, you can't it. But it's you know, kind of like I want to build a gas station. So I get all these people to help me build a gas station so they can come in here and buy my gas. So it's been a really long time since those connectivity fees have been evaluated. So Steve could go back and see what a more real cost to that is to see if, if you all are going to move forward with changing that policy, if there's an increase, a, a more real cost that needs to be considered as far as the connectivity goes. So there's a closer to initial return on investment. How much is a tap on fee? thousand uh, It's all according to to each thing. So the Average. water uh, fees are 320, the sewer fees are 480. You have a, typically about a, for a residential $250 uh, meter fee, $50 deposit. And if you have to go into P1, that's another 3000 which that's one of the things that's probably going to have to go up. We're, we're right now, my cost on the E1 with everything, you know, straight to me. 
is um, $2,975. Is that documented? And you're warranting the system by right. the way. Right. But now we, they get a $10 uh, maintenance fee per month on the warranty part that they don't take care of that. Yeah. But that will be that don't take care of any admin for us or anything or add of anything. So that's what is the one for those fees? It's the one we're calling. Yeah. It's not just. Yeah. So, the, the E1 cost to the customer is 3000 Part of this uh, on top of the other type of stuff? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. If they have to go with E1. Now, if they're ground, they don't have that. that. Yeah. But E1 is much cheaper to put in the ground than it is to put sewer in the ground. So it's a, it's a, which way do you want to, where do you want to save your money? Do you want to save your money in the front end and not have to put in gravity? And then have the developers pay a little bit more, or the home builders pay a little bit more for a D1. I mean, that's it's so it's D1 one is there. a tank with a digestive system that has to be inspected here on the night. The E1 is basically a single pump lift station on each house. It goes to the sewer line. That goes to a low pressure sewer line. Okay, yeah, what is that system that's a tank that doesn't have a, a elaborate a drain field system? As a digester, and it has to be inspected periodically. I'm not aware of that's that. a standalone system. So I mean, you see it at the coast. That's what I mean. I was going to say our place is keeping that's what they, they utilize. So I just call it grinding pump. Mm -hmm. You've got a tank, you've got a barrel or tank with yeah. a lid on about that big around out by the yard. You've got a control box with an emergency light on it. Yeah. If it fails, basically, he wants the same thing. Same thing. Yeah, that system. Yeah, I think that so it grinds up the waste and then turns it into a slurry so it'll pump down the line. That is correct. So your system pumps to a sewer line? Yes. And it goes to Perry or? It goes to wherever their the waste water is, the spray field or whatever. Yes, wherever. Sir. What I'll say as a builder is that it's, it's less expensive typically for me to put in a standalone set. And then I'm paying a sewer service fee indefinitely. So I mean, by the time I pay the tap fees, buy the, the E1 system from the county, and have somebody put it in, I'm, I'm right around the $5,000 price range. A septic system will be put in for $35,000. With no residual long term maintenance fees. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 You can't have your density yeah. in the Now, whether, and we sit here and say, well, we'll never get by to, to agree to it. 
And just because we can't get the office to agree to it doesn't mean we shouldn't look at doing it ourselves and making that vision. You know, even if we just got us, say, Howard and Lake Park to start it off, it might be 10 years from now before the office is able to join it. But just because the office will make the right decision doesn't mean that we can't make the right decision. So it's just something I'm trying to think about. And do y'all, I mean, do any of y'all see the potential of having one board of switches from serving all of Adams County? Are the benefits of that? No. No, no. what we got going now ain't broke. Understood. It don't. ain't broke, don't mess with it. Okay. And I don't want to inherit Bob Austin's mess. Understood. And then you're going you to have this authority. How many meals is it going to take a year to operate that monster? It should, it should run, run on solar. It should have, shouldn't have any tax money. Yeah, it should. It should. Marcus, what do you think? Uh, I think both y'all made uh, good points. I'd like to see a comparable community of our size that is operating with authority. And, you know, Roger, sooner. Roger. Roger. You know, like, um, like, um, and just to see, you know, just uh, if it'll work. But I just know it takes research. It takes time that I have to overnight. Um, it's something that, you know, when we, if we did go down that road, it is really no turning back. Because when you create these authorities, they're authorities. They are. And so, uh, you know, they determine their own rules, and then we kind of got to abide by them on their own. And so we got to be real cautious of you know, going down the road. Well, the purpose of bringing this topic up is at this point is not to delve into the depths of the water and sewer department, but to discuss, as Clay had referenced in that, the, uh, the requirement of the water and sewer uh, department to act as a true enterprise fund whereby it operates and funds itself. So I, I mentioned that only to say we all to think about that when you're saying what we need to do as far as requirement of the, the builder, the developers, the private citizen, or the role of the county yeah, as the utility department. Along those lines, I, I, I would say that it, it is for it to be a true enterprise fund then it needs to get to a point of where it stands alone. Now, we all know until the current system that Lowndes County has, until we have additional growth to that system, basically payers pay that system, in order to grow it, you're not going to have the revenue at this point to grow that system. So you're going to have to operate as a hybrid fund, but simply because you're going to have to continue to fund it like we have in the past every five to six years with splash revenue to be able to afford to grow the, the system. Now I do think it's, it's extremely important that any county that we look at or any area, you've got to you've got to seriously consider your water and sewer issues because really it all it all goes together if we if we back up a little bit and I know there's been a lot of discussion about density but if we loosen everything up on a density standpoint then you're getting into urban sprawl and you're just going to sprawl everything out and then it's going to make it even more difficult for us to be able to cover those areas in the county and the cost is going to go up but your ratepayers are going to come down. So it's a catch-22 there to be able to work that whole process out. I think that what we're doing at the present time um, is working very well. Um, Mr. Griner and I have had several discussions on potentially uh, his, his description of a you know, water authority. None of us could look 25, 30 years down the road to see if that is the best place for us to be. I do have concerns, and I've talked about it. Is number one is, at the end of the day, if you create something like that, you want it to be, to be able to better serve the citizens in this community. Better serving them means can you provide the services that they need, which means continually upgrading that system. 
as well as what is it going to increase in the cost of those users? Are your tap fees to the development of community, are those going to have to increase uh, substantially to be able to allow an authority to continue to operate, no different than what we are right now. So those are the questions and concerns. I've been right up front with play about those. Um, of course, again, you, you know, you have to make that step before you can ever find out where you're going to be at in 25, 30 years. So commend Clay for being that much of a visionary to look and say, this is where I think we need to be at. Now, we may be need, need to be thinking along those lines, but at the present time, we've got two issues that we've got to deal with. We've got a growing system that we've got to continually address the growth of that system. We've got a concern with the users and what those rate payers are. We also have a concern with the development authority that we can't we can't just assume as a business model that we've got to be able to recoup from the development industry all of that cost of that system. Because that's not practical of what we're actually trying to do, and that is to better serve the citizens. So I think you're not, I, I don't believe that you're going to get to a point in anywhere in the near or even some distant future as far as, as far as where Lowndes County is today, that you're not going to have to continue to subsidize water and sewer to be able to get it where it needs to be. And it's not just a growth issue. We're going to have to start considering these maintenance issues as well and upgrades and all of those things. Are we going to take a bigger bite of that responsibility so that we can continue to encourage development? And again, I'm not saying we got to encourage development because we wanted to grow, wanted to grow, it's meeting a demand. If there was not a demand for a for subdivision, these people wouldn't be making these investments out there on Wildell Road or wherever they may be just because they think there's a demand. These people have done this all of their lives and so they understand that there is a demand for these subdivisions because houses need to be built. There's a need that needs to be met. I just want us to clearly think through it to make sure that we're not part of the problem. We need to be a part of the solution that our county will be able to continue to grow. And when you serve areas with water and sewer, you to some degree or to a large degree, you as commissioners are driving that development of that area. So you've got to be smart about it, but you've got to also understand that it's very costly, but you can't turn to the customer and you can't turn to the rate pay or to the uh, developer at this point in time to say you've got to cover all the expense. We still have an obligation to grow the system. So okay, the way that that would kind of work though generally. So the county would have an appraisal done on their existing water sewer infrastructure. There'd be a value identified by an independent person for that value. Then the county would sell that system to the authority. Correct? The authority would borrow the money through FIFA or whoever that is and, and pay the county and the city if they weren't in, involved. Right. Have we looked at the, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah. Uh, can we can we at least do that? Can we like just just come up with some type of general valuation on the system and see what debt that would require for the authority, and then back our way into what's the revenue currently on the system, and is that even worth pursuing at this point? I mean, I, I would think that would be where we start to see because it's got to make sense for the authority too to build it. Right? But you can't start the authority off and say. For us to make this work and to cover our debt service, we gotta yeah, we gotta increase user fees, you know, right out of the gate. I, mean, I don't want to follow that. But but it may work. I mean with with deep loans at the rates that they're at and and, and things growing and I mean it, it may end up being a better service to our customers. And I think that's where you're going. You're just saying, hey, if somebody else can come in and this is no offense toward any anybody, I mean but if somebody comes in and focuses solely on a water sewer system that's combined, that's a joint effort for all of South Georgia, and, and they can focus on it and do it 
as good or better than we do, then I think it should be considered. I mean, it could be, it could be a nightmare. I mean, you got to consider the antiquated system that now lots of probably got to sit on. And they're sitting on this hundred years old. But but as we said though, how you gonna get a kind of true evaluation or something like that? Well, well I, I've heard some numbers and, and I and we don't take this to the bank, but I've heard just numbers of West Lowndes County system probably in this seventy five million dollar range. Um, potentially the city of Valdosta, hundred and fifty million. Probably puts hay hires, for example, at you know twenty-five. I mean, you're you're talking about huge, huge money just to be able to bring all of those together in some system. Like the <laughs> I, 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 all I'm saying is, you know, one. I mean, everybody can great fun, but I'm not trying to get nowhere near the city as water and sewer.